Grade 5 math number 6.10 use properties to add fractions. We can use properties of addition to help us add fractions. The commutative property says it doesn't matter which way we commute, the distance is the same. 3 plus 5 is equal to 5 plus 3. It doesn't matter which ones we add first, the sum is going to be the same. For associative property, it says it doesn't matter who we associate with first, we're all together in the end. We can add 3 plus 2 and then add 1, or we can add the 2 plus 1 and then add the 3. It's still going to equal 6. It doesn't matter who we associate with together first. See? All right, so if we had 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 fourth, we could use the commutative property to put like fractions together. This would be the first one, this would be the second, and then this would be the third. See, commutative property says it doesn't matter what order you do it in because it all comes out in the end, right? So we're going to group like denominators together and add them. We have 1 fourth plus 1 fourth, and then we add the 1 eighth. They can meet at 8's house, so the 4 and the 2 need to be multiplied by 2 to get there. We end up with 4 eighths plus 1 eighth, which is 5 eighths. Now we don't have to this time, but if you have to, remember to simplify if needed, okay? We can use the associative property to group like fractions together to solve first. We'll group these two together. If the eighths had been over here, we would have grouped them together this way. Now we can add three eighths and one eighth to get four eighths, and now we can add the one fourth. They can meet at eighths house, so four needs to be multiplied by two. One gets jealous, it's multiplied by two, and we end up with four eighths plus two eighths, which is six eighths. Now this needs to be simplified. We ask ourselves what number can both be divided by, not three, because it won't go into eight, but they both can be divided by two. 6 divided by 2 is 3, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and we end up with 3 fourths, and it's simplified as far as it'll go. We can also rewrite and regroup mixed numbers to be in a better position to add. 4 and 1 thirds can be grouped to 2 and 1 thirds. When we do that, we add the 4 and the 1 and get 5, and we add the 1 and the 2 numerators and get 3, and we end up with 3 thirds. And we know that is equal to 1 because when the numerator and denominator is the same, it equals 1. So 5 and 3 thirds is 6. Now to add the 2 and 3 thirds, we, 2 and 3 fourths, sorry, we can just add them and get 8 and 3 fourths. And actually, we could have used mental math to do this because the grouping made them so much easier, didn't they? All right, let's take a look at this one. We have 3 and 4 sevenths plus 4 fifths plus 1 and 1 seventh. So we'll rewrite and regroup the sevenths to be together. We add 3 and 4 sevenths to 1 and 1 seventh. 3 and 1 is the 4. 4 and the 1 numerators makes 5, so we have 4 and 5 sevenths. Now we need to add the 4 fifths, but because our numerators, our denominators are different, we need to get them the same to be common. Because we've got a 7 and a 5, the quickest way to do it is to multiply 7 times 5. That'll give us a denominator of 35. What does 7 need to become 35? Multiplied by 5. 5 gets jealous, it gets multiplied by 5 also. So we get 4 and 25 thirty-fifths. What does 5 need to be 35? It needs to be multiplied by 7. 4 gets jealous, it's multiplied by 7, and we get 28 thirty-fifths. Now, we have 4 and 53 thirty-fifths, and we need to simplify this because it's an improper fraction. So what we do is we say, well, we know 35 can fit into 53, and we'll get a 35 35ths out of it, won't we? There's one of these hiding in here. So we take that out, and we give it to the 4's side, the whole number side. 35 from 53 is 18. We add the 4 and the 1 and get 5, and we have 5 and 18 35ths, which actually is as low as it'll go, because there's no number 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, or 2 that'll evenly go into that. So 18 35ths is as small as it'll go. So just remember that we can regroup them and use the commutative property to make them easier to add, maybe so easy that it even ends up being mental math, or we can just put parentheses around them and group them to make them easier. But that we can use properties to help us solve fraction problems. Okay? Keep remembering to simplify and reduce your numbers to as far as they'll go. All right? I'll see you next video. Keep up the good work. Bye.